Hey everybody. So this is gonna be a little bit different video than I normally do. Um, normally you're watching me design my giant scale planes or I'm posting, you know, where I'm de designing the systems or 3D printing stuff or, you know, normally you watch that kind of video. But this video, and I don't want this to be taken as a rant, but I want it to be taken as, as my experiences, okay? So I have been seeing an awful lot of videos and uh, posts and uh, commentary on how dangerous LiPo batteries are. And it's, it stresses me out a little bit because I, I don't, if you followed me, if you're one of my fans, you know how, who I am. But if you've never seen this video, you don't meet, know me from Jack. But um, starting in late in 2006, I think early 2007, I got into electric uh, airplanes. At model aircraft and it's been my obsession I haven't owned a gas or a glow or never owned a turbine everything's been um, electric I think 2005 was the last time I owned a gas engine and it was in a 50% pits so with that said um, I'm seeing all these lipo fire stuff everybody's freaking out about lipo fires and and I see pictures where people had lipo fires and I'm just like I don't get it because my giant scale airplanes, I have four batteries. So basically it's two five series in two five cells in series, which gives me 10S. And then I do it in parallel 2P. So I have 10S 2P. That way a 5,000 milliamp pack is worth 10,000 um, when I'm flying in the air. So if I have a 5,000 pack, a 5,000 pack in series, five cell, five cell, that gives me 10S. Then I have another five cell and another five cell 10S, but they're par parallel. So it's it's 10S 2P, two parallel. So that gives me my eight to 12 minute flights on my giant airplanes. But the MSL-1, which was my really vintage looking airplane, had 756 flights on it. So if you think about it, take that 756 times four, and that's how many times I charged a LiPo. Never had a fire. Um, if you think of the MSL-2, I now have 136 flights. So take that 136 times four, that's how many times I've charged those LiPos. If you think about all the other electrics I've owned, um, and over the last, since 2007, I have owned 125, 26 LiPo batteries. Never had a fire. So I, I always want to break down a couple of things about people who have lipo fires, okay? And believe me, I'm not talking down to you. I'm not trying to sound like a know-it-all. I'm trying to share my experiences so that it will help people who fly electrics, okay? But here's a couple of things that have to be at the core of your DNA, your mental understanding of charging and maintaining lithium polymer batteries. So the number one thing is always be in the room with them when you're charging or be in the vicinity of them when they're charging. Not because the battery's dangerous, but because you might have accidentally set your charger up wrong or you might be using a crappy charger. Okay, I believe that firmly the reason I've never had a fire with a lithium polymer is because I have really good smart chargers. I have had a battery blow up once. It turned itself wrong side out. One of the cells turned itself wrong side out and shot across the room. And believe it or not, it was an A123 battery that I accidentally had on a manual charge on a different charger. And I think I was charging at like 56 volts when it should have been charging at like 6.6 .6 volts. So yes, I blew the shit of the crap out of that battery. Okay. Um, but I don't understand your fires, people. I don't know if it's a bad charger. Now, I will tell you something that happened to me one time. Um, and I might have had a fire if I didn't catch it. On my charger, I have, as you bash the buttons, you can set it on a fast charge, a balanced charge, um, um, discharge, um, to put it into the sleep mode for the winter. There's all these different settings in your charger. And I have a ritual that I put 
I hibernate all of my batteries at 3.8 volts for the winter. And then in the spring, when I go to the flying field, I'll charge them before I fly them. Well, I had to charge four batteries for the MSL-1. These batteries had like 240 flights on them. And um, I put it on the smart charger and it started charging. And I went by and I thought I smelled something warm. So I grabbed the first battery pack, nothing, second, third, grab the fourth. I'm like, whoa, it's hot in the middle. So it was a five cell. So if you imagine your five cells here, the fourth cell was really, really hot. The fourth cell. And I'm like, whoa. So I unplugged it, um, ran it through my tester. I had like, at the time, because it was charging, I had 4.1 volts, 4.1 volts, 4.1 volts, 1.1 volt, 4.1 volts. Well, this cell had died. <clears throat> and I wondered, why didn't my alarm go off? Because my charger will tell me if I've got a bad cell. I looked at my charger, I had it set on fast charge. I didn't have an unbalanced charge. If I had an unbalanced charge, it would have saw that discrepancy in the voltage in the cells and would have just beep, beep, beep and told me it wouldn't charge it. So make sure you know how your charger really works. Okay, and look, I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I'm not trying to talk down. I'm just saying since 2007, I have had 126 LiPo batteries. I have probably 3,000 to 4,000 charges and I've never had a fire. And I, I, I'm very passionate about, you know, giant scale electric. I'm mean, actually, I'm passionate about anything electric. So it really it eats me up when I see these posts on Facebook that, you know, another house was burned down, somebody was killed. Now, first of all, I've never heard of anybody dying from a lipo fire. I think that's just Facebook um, bloviating. But I've seen a lot of barns burn down. Not a lot. I've seen two or three barns burn down. I've seen a garage burn down. And people show a picture and the fire department says, oh, we get calls on these batteries all the time. <clears throat> I have a Google alert for any time there's a battery fire. You can go into Google, set alerts on any time there's a fire that's related to a battery. And if it hit the news and Google got it, Believe it or not, I keep a folder on it. There's not that many fires, people. Most of the fires in garages are people charging a car battery wrong. <clears throat> it's not lipos. Or it's somebody who has taken apart a DeWalt, DeWalt drill, put the wrong cell voltage in, thinking they're making it better, <clears throat> put it on their DeWalt charger, and then their DeWalt charger catches on fire. But talking about lithium polymer for a minute, if you have a smart charger, if you got healthy batteries, and you're in the room, there is no reason you should burn your house down. No reason at all. Another thing that I absolutely have everywhere is like in this shop, my laboratory as I call it, I have three smoke alarms. In my other room where my lathe and my other crazy equipment is, I have two smoke alarms. In my other room where I do all my testing, I have two smoke alarms. So if there's anything, sometimes me soldering and stuff in here will set off my, my smoke alarm. So smart charger, healthy batteries. And what I mean by healthy batteries is most your charger will check the internal resistance of each of your cells. Okay. I had my MSL one one time that I checked all the cells. They were 4.18, uh, like 4.19, 4.2. All the cells were perfect. Took the plane off, immediately had the uh, nine horsepower motor going to low voltage cutoff through the ESC. I was lucky enough to land the airplane. I couldn't figure out what happened. So me and my buddy put my batteries on the tester. It looked fine, checked the internal resistance, and the internal resistance was like 100 per cell, which is the batteries were garbage. The more you draw it, fly a battery, the more your internal resistance goes up. These batteries had 340 flights on them, people. I really, I keep my LiPos in such good shape, I can get at least 250 flights out of them before they really start to degrade, okay? And um, I'm not gonna go into to, to LiPo maintenance right now because I can do a whole video on how to maintain your LiPos. I'm talking about fires, people. Um, I'm not gonna say I'm ever gonna have a fire because, you know, I might, but 
if I ever damage a lipo, I immediately have a steel can, an old paint can, I set it in and let it sit for 24 hours outside away from the house. Um, but I, I don't crash my electrics much, knock on wood. Um, I, I've only damaged one lipo, and it was me being stupid and a little a four cell, um, and it never burst into flames. Uh, now, I have been at fly-ins where I've seen people take a wing and fly it into the ground at 100 mile an hour, and the lipo white smoke comes out and it's destroyed. Well, you do have the turbine, and the fuel's going to ignite off the, the hot metal or the turbine flame, and you're going to have a, you know, a small mushroom. But I'm talking about you burning your house down or burning your garage down or burning, burning your barn down. Smart charger, healthy battery, be in the room. Okay? You should not be burning anything down, people. Um, but that's pretty much it with this video. I think I've kind of ranted enough. I'm just trying to educate. I've spent my whole life in model aviation since the late 70s. Um, the last time I flew a gas engine, I think, was in 2005 on my half-scale pits. Um, since then, it's all been electric. And I've had really good luck, but I maintain my batteries. I take care of them. Um, educate yourself a little bit. Reach out. Send me an email. I'll, I'll, I'll help you however I can with lipos. But it's just really important that... You understand that if you got gasoline in your garage for the lawnmower, that's potentially dangerous if it leaked. Um, if you've got um, acetone stored, that's potentially dangerous. Out of the 126 lipos I own, I've never had one just burst into flames sitting in a drawer. So um, that's pretty much it, everybody. I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to educate. I just I just get really sensitive and want to go crazy when everybody's talking about how dangerous lipos are. Um, it, it it doesn't have to be that way if you're if you've got a good charger and make sure it's on balance charge. You may you, if you've got a fire you may unknowingly not have your charger set right. Um. But that's it, everybody. Have an awesome day. I hope you appreciate this. Hope you understand my passion, why I'm doing this. Um, if you're one of my fans, you understand the intent of what I'm doing in this video. If you're new, you may think I'm an ass, and, and that's fine. But my intent is to just get healthy information out there. You know, I, I read a post this morning. Somebody says, you know, I know 50 houses that have been burnt down by lipos. And... When people read that, they'll be like, oh my God, that guy knows 50 houses that's been burnt down by lipos. I don't think there's been 50 houses burnt down by lipos. So, I just want facts out there, people. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get the fact out there. So, hope you find this informative. Reach out to me if you got any questions about flying lipos and electric and all that stuff. Um, um, good charger, good batteries. Be in the room with it, and you should have zero problems, people. Rock on. Have a great day. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe so you get updates because I do a couple of videos a week. And uh, rock on, everybody. Take care and have an awesome day.